All right, today I am making a sandwich out of a classic fish and chips dish. We're gonna serve it on a soft Parker House roll. We're gonna put this beautiful fennel slaw on top. Get to this fennel here, right? Cut it in half, get those sides off. Make sure you core it. Nice little quick V cut, just like that. And shave it nice and thin. You wanna match the texture of the cabbage. Keep the fronds if you want. We'll use these as a garnish later, so hold on to them. A little parsley in there too for a little vibrancy. Awesome. Fresh herbs are always good, plus we're hitting the color spectrum. We got some green, we got some red, we got some white. Our fish is gonna be golden. And if there's a color we can apply to our tartar sauce, it would be the color of creaminess. Get it on there. You know, I know you're saying, you know, the Midwest is not big on fish. We didn't eat a lot of fish growing up. You know, we're landlocked. We do have the lake there. You can get some nice lake perch out of there. Or some trout, some salmon sometimes deeper in the lake. But uh, traditionally, we don't eat the seafood like the coast do. So, you know, the only time we would eat fish as a kid was usually on Fridays during Lent when you were forbidden you know, by the Catholic religion to eat meat on Fridays, right? My house, you could swear, you know, burn down a building, get in fights, but hey, if you ate meat on Friday, forget about it. We're all burning up in the afterlife. All right, we're gonna make the vinaigrette base here for our slaw. Got a little mustard, some fresh lemon juice in there, a little salt, a little pepper. Add your oil, slowly. That mustard's gonna help emulsify the oil and lemon juice. Let's taste it, right? If you ain't tasting, you ain't cooking. Mmm, very tangy. Lemon and fish, match made in heaven. Give that a nice stir. We're gonna set it aside, let it marry. Like all good slaws, they need a little time to develop there. Wonderful. Got a beer, some flour, two cups, right? We're gonna use a little baking powder. So a teaspoon of that, it's a typical ratio. Some salt in there too, right? Season it. You want your batter tasting good. Crack an egg right in the middle there. Very nice. Grab a whisk, kinda whisk up that egg around the flour first so you can incorporate it slowly. And then a nice frosty cold one. We're using Irish stout. It's a must for any fish and chip beer batter. You can use regular beer if you don't have this, but this just gives that certain something, that caramely flavor, that caramely color. Mix that up. Beautiful. Right from the fishmonger, I got this piece of cod. Very mild fish, not too fishy. And people use that word a lot when using fish, unfortunately. Like it's a bad thing. But well, this takes perfect to frying, perfect to breading, perfect to battering. When you bite into it, you can see all those individual flakes separating. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. It's a mild fish, so don't be afraid to season it liberally, okay? Now we're gonna cut it right down the middle, in half. Now using a little Jeffometry, cut that half and half, and that half and half, till we have eight even pieces. All right, first things first into the dredge. Helps the batter adhere to the fish. Let the excess drip off and gently place it in the oil, right? It'll start bubbling immediately. So keep going with it. We want these to kind of cook at the same speed. That is number four. Place it into the hot oil, right? You don't want to drop it from up here thinking you're, you know, some basketball star. Check your fish. My fish is starting to sing to me. The sound just changed, that means something's happening. Drain it, put it right on the paper towel. Give it another little seasoning here, right? We're seasoning in layers. Awesome, and I'm gonna hold it in the oven at 200 on a wire rack. Let all that hot air circulate around it. If you put it on a flat surface, it's just gonna get soggy, right? Whatever. Piece of fish is touching the flat surface, it's gonna get gooey. 
right? It's fried food, it's supposed to be crisp. This way you can do it in batches, make as many as you want. My inspiration probably helped launch the career of the Sandwich King, made me into a Sandwich King when I was just a little sandwich prince. Right, what are we gonna do with this? We are going to butter it. Parker House Rolls love butter. Nice hot griddle. Let's build these cod sliders, huh? In the oven, 200. Look at that, perfectly crispy. We got our soft Parker House Rolls, right? They've been buttered, they've been griddled. Put one of those perfectly cooked, battered fish right on there. Next, our lovely slaw. Remember, this was red cabbage, fennel, parsley, tossed with a lemon vinaigrette. Look how beautiful that looks already. We haven't even finished it yet. Of course, our tartar sauce. Remember, we have Worcestershire in there. Those briny capers, some pickled relish for some sweetness. Get a lot on there. We did a lot of work. Let's taste everything. Got my fennel frond. Little extra of that anise flavor. Perfect. And of course, we take that top bun and lay it right on there. Look at that. Cap it and spear it. I'm gonna take a bite. Come on. It's every flavor of a classic fish and chips dish on a soft bun. That tartar sauce is so tangy. The slaw, it's got that black licorice anise flavor. 